There are three main components of a battery. Two terminals made of different chemicals, the anode and the cathode, and the electrolyte which flows through these terminals. The anode. The anode, or negative side of the battery, is made in a special humidity and environmentally controlled space. The anode is made from a combination of zinc, zinc oxide, and multiple key additives to prolong the cycle life of the battery. This zinc binder mix is then combined with a gel, which creates the zinc anode paste. The paste will be delivered to the production line and will be dispensed directly into a lid gasket assembly. The lid gasket assembly is assembled by joining a stamped lid made from proprietary material and a micro-molded gasket. The lid gasket assemblies are then held in humidity-controlled environments at a prescribed level for a minimum 24 hours and are then released to the production line. The cathode. In a separate area called the cathode production area, the cathode or positive side of the battery is made. The cathode is made from silver oxide. The silver starts as a powder, especially treated using a wet chemistry process, and is combined with a binder and is put into an oven and turned into patties. The patties are then pressed into tablets and finally into pellets. Before cathode subassembly, the cans are laser marked for serial tracking. The laser marking machine applies three barcodes and one human readable code. The barcodes capture data about the specific lots of material, including what was originally received from the supplier, how it was processed, and the exact weight of each pellet. The serialization is then utilized throughout the process to accumulate all quality and supplied part information for each and every cell produced. The cathode subassembly is the process of joining the can and the pellet together. The cathode subassembler, located here in the cathode production area, picks up a plastic crimp ring and a pellet and weighs it in to make sure it meets specifications. The machine will then insert the crimp ring and pellet into the can and read and transfer the barcode information to the serial tracking system. The battery assembly line. The production line has a light curtain, an invisible laser beam system, which protects the line from interference and keeps operators safe from the automated system. If anything crosses the beam, the line immediately shuts down. The production line consists of greater than 30 individual stations. First, the cathode subassembly is brought in magazines directly from the assembler and dispensed individually to the front of the line. Next, the first electrolyte is dispensed into the cathode and it is placed into a timer box where it resides for four minutes to allow the electrolyte to soak into the cathode. The next station is the separator punch, which places the first group of separators inside the cell at one time. A second electrolyte is dispensed on top of the separators, and then another group of separators are placed. The cathode subassembly is then placed into a timer box to allow the second electrolyte to soak into the separators. Next is the creation of the anode subassembly. The lid gasket assembly is removed from its humidity controlled environment and placed into a feeder bowl and onto the traveler puck. Next, a small amount of adhesive is dispensed onto the gasket and the anode paste is dispensed directly into the lid gasket assembly. A final separator is added and it travels to the heater press station where it adheres to the separator to the adhesive gasket and encapsulates the anode. The anode subassembly gets picked up off the puck and is brought forward to mate with the cathode side of the cell. At this time, the negative electrode meets the positive electrode. The anode subassembly is inserted inside the cathode subassembly by a vacuum seat station to a desired depth. Next, at the crimp station, the can material is crimped and sealed. The battery is now fully assembled. The fully charged cell moves to the annex where the voltage, height, weight, barcode, and lot number are read and stored. The lines will automatically reject a cell 
if it does not meet predetermined specifications or if all the upstream data for that cell is not collected in specification. The cell then travels to a wash station and then into a centrifuge station which spins a cell at a high RPM to prepare the cell for formation and grading. At this time, the cells are transferred to a tray where they are positioned into a specific configuration. Each of the cell's barcodes are read and recorded for traceability and quality control purposes. Formation and Grading Before shipping, it is important to form the cell to prepare it for a long life in the field. This is done by charging and discharging the cell, which typically takes over 48 hours. Once the cells have finished the formation process, they are then cycled twice at customer-specific rates. Each cell's barcode is read and its performance is recorded. The batteries are inspected for nearly 20 quality features over the course of this process. The entire formation and grading process takes approximately one week. The battery is finished at this point and can be packaged and shipped. 